In this video, I will explain all of the truth tree rules for two-sided truth trees in predicate logic. So there are just four rules for quantified formulas that we will need for doing truth trees in predicate logic. These rules should be easy to memorize since they basically mirror what we do with quantified formulas in predicate logic proofs. None of the rules for predicate logic truth trees require branching, so that's another thing that makes them very simple. We will start with the rules for the left-hand side of the truth tree, universal left and existential left. So if we have the formula for all x, px on the left side, we will instantiate that pa. Likewise, if we have the formula there exists an x, px, on the left side, then we can also instantiate that, pa. So for both of these, we can use any of the letters a through v, just like in proofs. However, the, there's going to be a restriction on existential left just like there is on E out in proofs. And the restriction is basically the same. The restriction is that the letter we use, so let's say A in this case, the letter we use to instantiate the formula must be a letter that is new to the branch. And so just like in proofs, we're only going to instantiate the existential formulas once. So we'll check that off when, once we're done with it. However, like in proofs, we can do the universal formula more than once if we need to. So we're going to put a plus next to it, and we'll just put another plus next to it every time we instantiate it. Okay. Now we'll go to the rules for the right-hand side of the truth tree. Universal right and universal left. So, similarly to the left-hand side of the rules, what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate the formula. So if we have, there exists an x, px on the right, We'll instantiate that PA. And again, we can use any of the letters A through V to instantiate our formula. However, in opposite, it's the right hand rules are the opposite of the left hand rules in terms of which one has the restriction. So on the left hand side rules, the existential has the restriction, and we get that a check mark. On the right hand side, the universal has the restriction that A must be new to the branch. Well, the existential, we can do as many times as we like. And why is that? Well, if you think about it, it makes sense. Because if we have a for all x, px, on the right-hand side of a truth tree, well, that's like saying the statement for all, it's false that for all x, px, on the left. And well, that's just the same as there exists an x, not px, on the left. So, if we were to instantiate there exists an x, not px, on the left-hand side, well, we'd need to use a restrict, we'd have a, the restriction. And so that's why we have a restriction on for all x, px, when it's on the right-hand side. And likewise, for the existential, there exists an x, px, on the right, that would be, um, it's false that there exists an x, px, if it was on the left, and that would be the same thing as a universal statement. So that's why that doesn't get a restriction. The easiest way to remember 
which ones get the restrictions, which ones to get a check mark, and which ones are plus rules, is to focus on the left-hand side ones, which mirror exactly how we do it in proofs. In proofs, we can instantiate a universal um, to any letter A through V. We can do it more than once. Whereas uh, the existential, we have the restriction on E out. So remember the left-hand side ones. And then just remember that the right-hand side ones are the opposite of the left-hand side ones. That's probably the easiest way to remember. Okay, so now there's an additional thing that we need to discuss. Um, so there are these plus rules, right? Universal right and existential left. I've said that we can instantiate these formulas more than once. That's why we need a plus next to these steps rather than a check. But how many times will we want or need to instantiate them? And how do we know when we should do so? Pospisil has an answer for this, something he calls the plus principle. So the plus principle says, if an open branch contains a quantification marked with a plus that has not been instantiated to some constant that occurs on that branch, then the quantification must be instantiated to that constant before the branch may be marked open. So the idea is something like this. So suppose that, you know, this is part way down through your truth tree. There's other stuff up above. And you've gotten down to this branch that doesn't close because we've got a PA on the right hand side, but we've got PB on the left. So that's not a match. Those aren't the same formula. And you might think, oh, I could just declare this open. But you can't, not yet, because as you look up the branch, you see that you have a quantification marked with a plus, and it's been instantiated to one of the letters, PA and QA, it's been instantiated to A. But there's also a PB on the same branch. So before we can declare this to be closed, we need to instantiate the formula, there exists an X, px and qx to b before we can say, yes, this branch is open. So we'll do that down here, pb and qb. And then we would take that apart and see if the formula, see if all the branches close. So that's about all there is to it with the rules for predicate logic truth trees. The rest is just like the propositional logic truth trees in that once you have instantiated your quantified formulas, you will then need to use the same rules you used in the propositional logic truth trees to decompose the formulas. So one final important note. You need to pay attention to what the major operator is in all your formulas. For example, Suppose you had the formula for all x, px, if for all x, px, then for all x, qx on the left-hand side of the truth tree, or the right-hand side. My point would remain the same. If you tried to use universal left on this formula to get, let's say, p a arrow q a, that would be wrong, because the major operator is in the formula if for all x px then for all x qx is not the universal quantifier. It's the arrow. So just like using for all out would be wrong in this formula, you can't use for all out on if for all x px then for all x qx in a proof. It's also wrong to use universal left on this formula in the truth tree. Instead, we need to take apart uh, if for all x px, then if for all x qx, using the rule of arrow left first. And then we can use our quantifier rules on those parts. So, 
this one, we want to do this one first because it's a check rule. And then we can do this one. So let's see these rules in action using an argument from predicate logic as an example. So we're going to use this argument. So we want to start, we want to start with any rules that are going to get a check rather than a plus because we want to pay it because then the restrictions will not work against us. So we can use the same letter and everything. So I'm going to start with doing universal right on this. S-A arrow A-A. And I'm just going to go ahead and instantiate everything else. So I'll instantiate both of these formulas. A-A arrow E-A and then S-A arrow E-A. Okay, and then I'm going to start using the rules from propositional logic to take apart these formulas that I've instantiated. So I'm going to start with SA arrow AA because that will not branch. So that makes SA is true and AA is false. Then I can do either of these two formulas um, and hopefully something will close off. I know if I do SA arrow EA that that will close off because I'll have SA is false and EA is true. So that closes off there. And finally, I will do EA arrow AA arrow EA. So I have AA here and I have EA here. So the AA closes off but the EA does not because the EA is on is on the uh, true side in both cases. So this argument is invalid. So now what I'm going to show you is how we can read a truth a counterexample off of this truth tree just like we did with the propositional logic truth trees. One new thing we're going to have to add is what's our domain? So what letters have we used to instantiate this argument? So we only use the letter A. So our domain is just A. So then we need a truth value for SA, for AA, and for EA. And so we read that off by going up the truth tree. So EA is true and AA is false, and SA is true. And then we can use that to check and see if the argument works. So here we have AA is false, and EA is true. So the first premise is vacuously true, because its antecedent is false. And then we have, for every X, if it's an SX, then it's an EX. Well, everything that's an S is also an E. So that works. And then for all X, if SX, then a AX, well, that's false because we have a thing that has the quality S. A has the quality S, but it does not have the quality A. So we have all our premises true and our conclusion false. And so this counterexample shows how it's possible for the, all the premises to be true and the conclusion false. So it's a counterexample. So that's all there is to doing predicate logic truth trees. Just a few easy rules layered on top of what you already know from the propositional logic truth trees.